Hello ladies, Sean Burton here, your marketing and scaling expert for women in private practice. And today we're talking about why your earnings have decreased since you took on team. I see this all the time where I've spoken with clients where they have a full caseload when they were an, a solo practitioner, seeing 30 clients a week, making 150 to $200,000 a year with a full caseload. And then they bring on team because that's what they're told to do to make more money and to be more effective and to leverage their business. And suddenly they're making 100,000. And then they bring on another team member and suddenly they're only making 60,000. And then they bring on another team member and now they're not paying themselves. And they're at a loss as to what happened. I want to talk today about why that happens and what you can do to stop it in your practice. Now, the number one reason that people aren't paying themselves when they're running a private practice is that their team are not full or that they are paying their team too high a percentage split and therefore there is not enough money to cover the running expenses of the business and they're therefore having to put money in. So let's talk about each of those. The most common one by far is that their team are not full. And I see this all the time. People will have um, two team members that are about 70% full and they'll say, oh, I'm, I'm going to hire somebody else because we are running out of slots. But then that next person comes on and capacity drops down a bit more again. And now they're all sitting at 60% capacity and they're not full. And the cost of running a business with three or four people in it is much higher than one. You need multiple rooms. You need an admin team member by this point. You're paying lots of additional expenses. You're paying extra um, practice management system costs or EMR costs. You're paying um, all sorts of different uh, memberships and um, logins for these people, but they're actually only just about breaking even on their salary with the amount of clients that they're seeing. And that's where your income goes to topping up the shortfall that's created by them not being full. So I, at the moment, have a, a client who is desperate to hire. She has 40 staff. She doesn't have enough staff with each of her supervisors. And she's like, we need more staff. And I said, you don't need more staff because they're only at 65% full. And we're not bringing on more, client, more team to make your supervisors busier when it's going to affect your profit further and make your cash flow harder. So she's been on a hiring freeze for about three months, much to her annoyance, but she'll stay on that freeze, as I said to her last week, until she's at 85, 90% utilization of her current team. You shouldn't be hiring someone until you can forecast that your current team will be at capacity. If they're not at capacity, you don't need another team member. You just need to fill the sessions that your clients have, uh, your team have right now with clients. Um, and I know that sounds strange because people are like, well, you just hire when they're almost full, you hire. But that's what leads you to come unstuck and to end up not paying yourself. Now, the other thing I spoke about was where you are paying your team too much. And I see this happening more and more, particularly in US-based mental health services. There seems to have been a move to people asking for an 80-20 split in what they're bringing into the business and it is completely unsustainable and it is not financially viable as a business model to do that so if that's something you're doing right now know that you're not going to be able to unpick that you can't go to someone and say hey can i actually have 20 percent more of your income even though i've been paying you 80 percent as hard as it is when you know that that's not the right move but what you can do is make different decisions moving forward and and know your numbers and know your financial position and know what your business needs to be profitable in order for you to be able to offer the right package to someone coming into your practice. And I know many of you are women and I hear it all the time. I just wanted to pay people properly. I wanted to generously reward them for their work. And I'm all for that. But you have to know what the financial implication is for you. I'm working with two ladies at the moment who have got an 80-20 split. They've been desperately trying to grow their business so they can pay themselves for the admin work they do to run the business. Instead of, and therefore not, that's all they're asking for. They just want to pay themselves for their admin time. But they're actually only able to make money in their practice if they work because they don't earn anything if they don't because there's nothing left. 
And they've been trying to grow their way out of this problem. So they've gone from four staff to 10. But as I said to them, like, all you're doing is growing a problem. You're not actually creating a solution because it's not financially viable. You'll fill your team up, fill another team member up, just start to make a profit. And then you're going to need it to have more admin support come in because now you've got 12 people that need admin support in the practice. And, and so it will go on. Then it will be that they need a bigger space. They only need more admin support. There's no margin in there. There's no profit in there for them to be able to pull out the business however they grow it. They could grow it to 50 people. It would still be a struggle to make a profit. So if that's where you're at, then it's going to require quite um, – a hard look at your numbers with a financial account, like accountant with financial success strategies and success without sacrifice who do this. But what does it actually look like from a financial point of view, the model you're running at the moment? And is that going to work long term? And is it going to give you what you want long term? Because I can tell you that an 80-20 split doesn't work long term if you don't want to have to work in your practice every day and you don't want to have to manage 50 people to be making any kind of profit in your practice. So if that's where you're at at the moment, I would really encourage you to sit down with your account and, and, and model what that actually looks like because there's generous and there's charitable. And you aren't running a charity. You're not running a place where people can come and make amazing money with none of the risk and none of the stress and none of the requirements of running a business. And you take all of that with no financial return. That doesn't make any sense and it isn't sustainable long term. And I know that the market is moving that way, but it will, it will not continue to move that way because people will realise that you, it's not sustainable. It can't work like that. If that's not the situation, and it is just that your team are only 70% full and you're not paying yourself as you would like to be, then what you need to focus on is removing yourself from being the fountain of all referrals. Now, what do I mean by that? What I see happen with people who have got between one and three, sometimes four, usually not four if they're full-time um, therapists, is that they will be the person who all the referrals come to and then they try and palm off what they can to other people. So they're the fountain of referrals. They come in and then they try and share them around with varying degrees of success, right? If you're someone who's listening to this say, I try to do that all the time, but none of my None of the referrals that come for me want to see my team. I hear you because they don't, because they've been referred to you. And that is limiting your growth. That's why your team are only at 70%, because you can't generate enough referrals who are willing to see people who aren't you to keep them full. And it's not your job to. What you need to focus on is working with them to build their own referral bases like you have, their own set of people who refer to them and say, you need to see this person at this practice so that they get the phone ringing for them. And instead of it being someone calling for you and you or admin trying to persuade them that Michelle is just as good a therapist as you are, they need to be calling for Michelle. And if Michelle's not there and you get offered, them saying, oh, no, I don't want to see that person. I want to see Michelle because that's who I was told to see. That's how you take your team from being... 70% full to being 100% full without you having to work any harder. And many of you will say, well, how can I ask them to do that? They're in my business. But this is a skill set that I see as professional development. Now, they're not going to work for you forever. If they just aren't. And if you think they are and you're treating them like they are, then you're going to be really disappointed. So when they leave, and they want to pick who they see and what types of clients they see. And they want to have their ideal clients calling and asking to see them instead of just having any old hodgepodge of clients dumped in their diary. We've all experienced that. They need to know how to do that. Now, if you teach them in your practice how to build their own caseload, that's a skill that they can take with them forever. So when they go to the next place and admin start just dumping stuff into their diary, they're like, oh, no, I'm going to fill my diary with who I want to see. Thanks very much. And if they then go on and want to start their own practice in five or 10 years time, then they have the skill set to be able to do that too. And I know some of you are thinking, so what if I teach them and then they go off on their own and then they take all the clients? That's going to happen too. But we can't live in a, a world where we limit what we do to grow our practice 
for fear of losing out somewhere later on that that scarcity mindset is what will keep you stuck having an abundance mindset there are more than enough clients to go around and capitalizing on the potential of that therapist right now while they are working for you is what's most important like let's say that person sits at 70 percent capacity for a year and nothing changes and they bring in seventy thousand dollars for you Imagine if you filled them up and they spent a year sat at 100% capacity and they brought in an extra $30,000 of revenue for you with no additional overheads and then they left, what would you rather have? Would you rather have the 70% and 70,000 with no effort being put in and then leave? Would you rather them leave and having made you an extra $30,000 that year? I know what I'd rather and it's the $30,000 in my bank account. So always be focused on how can I make the most of what I have right now? How can I ensure that I've optimized what's happening in my business right now, even if my whole team decides to leave? Because they are going to leave at some point. And and actually in investing in them, you're going to find that they stay longer. So how do you do that? How do you help them build their own caseload? I teach a three-step program process in my abundant referrals marketing approach. It's around clarity. So Number one, who do they want to work with? Because you can't be a generalist and attract referrals. If people send clients to you in in big numbers, it's generally because you're known for something. So they need to have clarity around who their ideal client is. Secondly, they need to then go out and identify people who see that ideal client that they can collaborate with. So if you're an occupational therapist, you might go and collaborate with speech pathologists, psychologists, um, mental health professionals, psychiatrists, any number of other health professionals who see your ideal client every day that you can start to build collaborative relationships with. Because when you build collaborative relationships with other like-minded professionals who see your ideal client, what you create is community around your practice. And that community breach trust, credibility. It's a genuinely good experience for your clients because if they say to you, hey, do you know a massage therapist? Yes, I do. We have one that we refer to. We have one we know very well. It's a great experience for everybody. And as a result, people refer to your practice and your team. When somebody says to you, can you help with this? And it's not something you can help with and you refer them out, that's based on trust and relationship that's been built with that person. You don't send them to someone you Google, you send them to someone you know. And this process allows you to build that community of people who know, like, and trust you around your practice and leads to referrals coming into you. And the thing I get asked all the time is like, how do you know this will work for my practice? I run, I teach this process to people who are brand new starting out and trying to fill their own caseload right up to a two and a half million turnover practice that I'm working with right now, whom we have used this process with to add an additional 350 350 sessions to their weekly caseload, resulting in an additional $50,000 of revenue per month. It works whatever the size of your business. If this is something you're interested in and you would like to know more about how you would go about doing this, then I would love to invite you to join me for my next private practice growth accelerator we start next monday and over the course of five days i'm going to be teaching you the exact steps you need to take to implement this in your practice and teach your team how they can go about filling their own caseload so that you don't have to be the fountain of referrals anymore and you can start to pay yourself properly if you'd like to join us you can find the um, link to do so in the comments and um, i will look forward to seeing some of you there I hope this was helpful today. Comment below with what you found most helpful, what was insightful for you. Um, And if you've got anything you would like me to talk about in the future, just comment that below as well, because I'm always looking for things that you guys are stuck on, that I can provide you some training and help around.